What follows is a recording of an online meeting that was held on Sunday, March 18th with a group of about 35 women. From all over the world, we were, we were kind of brainstorming what we could do as individuals to reach the girls within our sphere of influence to give them the ideas that their dreams can come true, that they don't have to have babies, that they don't have to serve men, that they can say no, and that it's okay to think of themselves first. Those are the kind of things that we want to communicate to young women. And I think that with this kind of group of women who are so devoted to improving the lot of girls, we can go far. Put your comments down below. All right, because this, this recording is on. So, you know, everything that you say is now being recorded, ladies. Uh, what I would like to do is first go around and... You know, everyone, I think, uh, has an idea of what this meeting is about. But in case you heard about it from someone else, you didn't get the full details. Let me give you an idea of what I want to do today. The purpose of this is to get women together. Many of you who are mothers or you, you, know, you have uh, young women in your family. You work with young women professionally. You know young women socially, like at church or your neighborhood or whatever. And you have, a, you have the opportunity today to explain for, from your perspective what you think are the top problems that young women are facing and what we can start doing differently as women to influence them in a positive way. Now, the the pro everyone is going to go. Of course, I have a different perspective, and I want to hear me what you think are saying. I don't know the top two or three um, issues that young women are facing. So let's start with you, Vix. And, and if you have an age group that you want to limit it to, feel free to say that too. And I'm going to go around and ask each of you in turn what you think. Well, I am a little bit different. I am not a mother. I'm not a wife. I'm none of those things. But I really am passionately um, an advocate for young girls, black girls, um, especially since I um, got onto. Uh, I just stumbled upon, um, the, well, since 2012, like the blog talk space. I think that's where I first connected with you, darling. Oh, and okay. then, um, yeah, it was 2012. I was listening to, I was listening to the guys on there and I like, I was like in my forties, I'm like, what the heck? I did not know none of this information. I mean, it literally blew my mind that how the guys get together, operate and share mostly pimp, Pimpology skills to get over on girls, to get over on women, and to and and not only do they not decide to change it, they want to keep perpetuating it by right. teaching um, by teaching the next generation like yeah you got like this you have got the game you know you have game and all this kind of stuff and these young vulnerable young women are out there being literally trampled on because our mothers have taught us well you know actually I was on a dialogue last night. Um, with BGS for women and we had like a it was offline it was like an offline session uh -huh. and there was four of us on the conversation and we were in the chat room and we were like we've all had the same problems with our mothers they didn't tell us nothing they didn't teach us about nothing about men they didn't school us on how to protect ourselves they just, there was just wasn't any wisdom I'm like 50 on Friday I'm so happy to be 50 on Friday oh well I advance I mean advance happy birthday but yeah, I'll be in Paris, girlfriend, and I'll be making sure I put a poster up, post pictures up. But um, I realized that actually these other girls were younger than me. There was a girl of 27, and she's never had a boyfriend. She's never had a boyfriend because she's been so traumatized by the serious pimparky, especially in the black community, that she doesn't want to go there. And she didn't have any knowledge, and I had the same conversation my end of the scale so it was really interesting and every woman since I've got onto YouTube or I've got onto um, blog talk what I've made sure I do any girl that's kind of like oh I don't know what to do I start sh I just start sending in your videos I just start sending you can't tell the girls what to do they have to listen to it for themselves to see right what's going on and they then have to make 
the adjustments like I have done. And that's so basically my contribution. Sum up, sum up what you're saying is you think a lot of it starts with the lack of education yeah, absolutely. Um, at home. Okay. Yeah, my mother doesn't know nothing. My mom was twenty my mom was twenty when she had me. Twenty come from a she she was from Grenada, she's living in England. The man was cute. That was it. What's she gonna teach me? What skills has she got to teach me anything? Okay. Well let me um I'm gonna mute your mic for a minute and I'm gonna take a comment from Tracy. Miss Tracy, do you have a comment to make? Um, hold on one second. I don't even know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Okay. Well, you know, in listening to this and us um She's right about one thing. I'm, my mother didn't tell me jack shit. My mother's explanation about relationships with men is stupid. Okay. Um, I also think it's the absence of a healthy male pres uh, presence in our lives. Because the guys that I grew up with were the type of men my mother dated were some of my pitfalls later on in life as I started to mature and, and become interested in men. And it was a disturbing pattern there. I don't think our mothers, and I can't speak for all, but I see a great deal of our mothers are just as ignorant as we are. Okay. So, you know, but one thing I found is that the mothers, if they don't know because nobody told them, they don't know they're incapable of teaching their daughters. I agree. And that becomes a problem. Okay, so if their mothers don't know, then, and we know, how do we reach those girls? You don't have to come up with an answer right now, but just think about that because that's something that I want us to kind of, you know, toss some ideas out um, by the end of the conversation. So just think about that for a minute. I'm going to mute your mic. Let me, Hi, um, let me take a call from, who's saying that? Who's ready? Kathy from Chicago. This oh, Kathy you're here, from... finally. Let me <laughs> yes, I'm here. I'm here, lady. <laughs> okay, I'm looking. I don't see your name on Is this you on the phone? Yeah, this is me on the phone. Ah, oh, okay, no wonder. All right, okay. All right, because I'm looking rather rough. I got a cold. You don't want to see me right now. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, well, I'm so glad you're here, because I was like, where is everybody? I'm over here by myself. <laughs> um, well, tell me what you think. Because we talk a lot about this, is these kinds of issues on Facebook, and mm -hmm. uh, we got. Well, I'm not sure if you got to hear the first caller was saying that her mother didn't teach her anything, and she keeps meeting women whose mothers didn't teach them anything. And the second caller just said pretty much the same thing: that uh, it just seems like the girls aren't getting this information that they need about men right. at home. So, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. And I didn't get that type of information as a young woman from my mother. But I have two daughters. Uh, one will be 31 in April, and the youngest will be 17 at the end of this month. And I've talked to my daughters. The oldest, my youngest one is listening. The oldest one has to be hard headed. They want to listen. Because a lot of times you get information from young women, and they don't want to <laughs> listen to y'all. You mad, you bitter, you this, that, and the other. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Watch this thing, and you go come back to my mama. You be right, and that's what happened with my oldest. <laughs> you know, sometimes they don't want to hear the information; they got to learn the hard way. Well, that's true too. But um, some of these, you know, the the young ladies in the group that I'm talking about, um, I don't know that they would have. They've even had the opportunity to not say that, you know, to say that they don't want the information. If nobody's, they just seem like they're just totally clueless. I mean, the games yeah, they that are. they write about to my advice column and the stuff that they, they're falling prey to is just such basic game. It's like, are you kidding me right now? You didn't exactly. know this? And it's just a shame that people are just like, they're sending their daughters off to college and high, you know, high school and college with no information about how to protect themselves, no information about how to recognize gang. And it's just like, it's sending a lamb to slaughter. Why are you doing that to your daughters? Right. And when they come home pregnant, you go blind for everything. Right. But you don't teach them anything. You just put them out there. Like you said, we'll, uh, like it's a whole bunch of wolves out here. You can't be serving your daughters up like lamb. You have to talk to them. And a great deal of time, the ones in our age bracket, they don't know nothing either. Be quiet. <laughs> you do that all the time. No, I, don't. Say how no, I don't. I don't. Not, I have not done you that. Who's that talking in the background? Um, you know, you guys can mute 
mute your mics if you have stuff going on in the background. Um, okay. Just, you know, I'll activate it when it's your turn to talk. Um, let me see. Let's get, um, let's see, whose name is I'm looking up here who looks like they're ready to talk? Dawn. Dawn Goodman. You got something to say, Dawn? Hello? Hello? All right, she's not speaking up. Okay, what about Christina? Christina Bonilla? See that? Just everybody's quiet. Nobody wants to talk. Okay. Why nobody wants to talk? I don't know. I don't know why they're being so shy. Maybe they just came to learn. What about you, Viola? Yeah. Do you have something to, to add to this conversation, a perspective? Something you think girls need to know? Viola, is that who you address? Yes. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was trying to go around, you know, go up and down the list to give everyone an opportunity to, to say, you know, to share their perspective. Um, well, I just wanted to say one thing. I mean, I have nieces who are all in their 20s. All of them have children. Um, one of whom has a child with a man who has, I don't know how many children, or how many other women. And I try to ask her, it was like, why did you think it was a good idea to have, she had just had her second child on Christmas with the same man who has all these other children. And I asked her and she said, well, I think it's important that my kids have the same in a minute. Mm -hmm. She thinks it's important that they have the same father? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, he's, he's not a father. He's, like I said, he's got kids with I don't know how many different women. And she thought this was better to do this rather than just wait, finish getting her work history established and raise her daughter and then possibly meeting someone else down the line who's committed to her and her daughter and then have a child with somebody who's a fully committed person. But I can't get through to them. I, she says, I've never seen that. Her mother has children. Her siblings all have different fathers. So I think they see that as the norm. So I think that's something that young women, they don't see, you know, nuclear families anymore. So they don't really have that as a guidepost, I guess. And I, that concerns me. It does. Oh, somebody figured out how to raise your hand. How did you do that, Dawn? Because somebody <laughs> just asked me how to do it. I'm like, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> it's somewhere at the bottom of the screen, but I guess it depends on what device you have. Oh, you might be right. If you're on a phone, it may be different. Yeah, I have a tablet, so. Okay. Well, okay, I, I see now. Okay, you know, I just, I really need to use this more often. So I pay for it every month and use it like every now and then. It's just sad. Okay, I'm going to lower your hand and mute your, you temporarily. Okay. And uh, get, um, let's see, who didn't speak yet? Well, you know, you guys... Raise your hand if you had a little, if you see the little icon like this on the bottom of the screen. Um, she's on a tablet. And uh, let me know, that'll let me know that you, you know, want to make a con contribution to the discussion. So, Kathy, what do you think about, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about is, um, you know, the baby mama factors, how so many young women seem to want to, just like the caller just mentioned, you know, to have um, children and, uh, you know, repeatedly without the benefit of marriage. Is that something that we should, you know, to focus on more with our girls and so that they don't have, you know, miscellaneous children by every dude that they have a relationship with? You know, it's kind of weird. I was just talking with my older brother. Her, she has two best friends. And one of the best friends is married. She doesn't have any children. And the other one has four children by three different men. And they all treat her like shit. And she just steady keeps getting pregnant. And I think it has a lot to do with self-esteem. Because I, I'm trying to figure out why she keeps having all these kids. Because she's struggling to catch it. So why is you continue to make it harder on yourself by continuing to have children? You know, she works, but... She got four kids. <laughs> then, you know, that's, it's not enough to go around. And she just steady keep having the kids and she don't listen to nobody. <laughs> what is you know? that? And it's like, and it does, it's not hard for, for the children too. Because it's like right. they, they get the resources that they need to have because exactly. everything is spread so thin. That's just not fair to the children. 
But personally, since I came up with this theory, a lot of women, these young women actually don't want children. They want a baby daddy. Just, which sounds really crazy. I Wait, can't what? really think of anything else. <laughs> they want a baby daddy. They don't want the baby. They want a baby daddy. They want somebody that's going to be around all the time that they can have sex with, that they can have some drama with. They don't really want these children. <laughs> Oh my God! I am just like I don't even know what to say that's to that. Just, right, that's something that I've just been paying attention to. Because why is you steady having these kids by these dudes that have proven themselves not to be worthy to continue their line? And it's usually all about the dude. It's not about the kids. They want a baby daddy. And I know that sounds crazy, because it is. <laughs> but that's just the theory I came up with. Because I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Okay, I would have never thought that in a million years, but you may be right. Keisha, I um, would love to have you on. Um, you need to unmute your mic, or do I do that? I guess I can do that. Never mind. Unmute. Why is it not unmuting? <sighs> Unmute. Greetings. Okay, there you go. All right. Here I am. Here I am. Okay, so what's your two cents on this issue? Well, you know, my daughter is 11, so I represent that age group, like 10, 11, 12. We live in the Bay Area, so she's very active in so many different things. She moves around a lot of different circles, and so I'm around a lot of girls. Like, I'm always carpooling. Like, I have them with me a lot. <clears throat> and so she attends public school in Berkeley. Yeah, but you know about Berkeley. Mm -hmm. so, so right now we have this big situation going on at her school specifically, in her class specifically, where there is a young man, he is sexually inappropriate. And so, you know, it's Berkeley. If you know Berkeley, you know Berkeley is a supposedly inclusive hippie type place. Yeah, just for people who you know, might not remember, Berkeley was at the core. Berkeley and hate Ashbury at the core of the hippie hippie area yeah, I remember area and um you know I always would have demonstrations about the yes. war I mean it was they used to call it berserkly because everybody <laughs> it was kind of crazy but um that's that's the city that she's talking about. yeah it's very interesting we like it we really like the community um you know it's a good fit it, it just happens to be a big problem right now because and it's specific to our culture I feel that the boys in our culture are allowed to be, you know, very sexually uh, inappropriate at a young age. And so, yeah, you know, we, we have, yeah, we have a lot of cultures in, um, in Berkeley, you know, the majority, right. you know, Craig Mon is up in the Berkeley Hill. So that's money. So the most of the kids are white and they are privileged. And so the school has that same demographic as far as administration. They don't know how to, handle this situation so now it's become a big thing at the school board they don't have anything in place for sexual harassment because it's new nobody but you know they don't have that in other schools like in, yeah. in cities because i ran across that with my youngest child when she was in grammar school and she would come home and tell me about the inappropriate paper with these little boys and she wow. couldn't have been no more than like seven or eight grades and That's i tried good. to get a meeting together yeah. with the parents and nobody showed up i'm like Peaky, and did y'all not teach y'all sons about appropriate behavior with young women no. To keep your hands to yourself, right? Before one little girl snatch the shit out of you, because I told <laughs> my daughter to snatch the shit out of somebody if they lay hands on her. Right. You know? And now that some way. of these girls have crazy older brothers and uncles and right, exactly. daddies and stuff, and you put your hands on their daughter, you're gonna be burying your son. Right. So exactly. They, these mothers and fathers, they need to like really give these kids these lessons. And not only that, they yes. may touch the wrong person's daughter, and you end up sued. Your son's in prison for life, or you know, twenty years or whatever. I mean, yeah, it just makes no sense. Right. That's where we are. The um, because it is Berkeley. Um, the school board is not doing anything about it. So those parents are ready to file sexual harassment charges. And so and that's what people, they should do. Right. But yeah, they people should. outside of the community, they think, oh, it's privileged white people picking on this one black kid. No, the, he's a, he needs <laughs> help. <laughs> you know, we're not. Well, he needs to get no, checked that, before, that. Get, before it truly gets out of hand. Right. We know what's going to happen if it doesn't 
um, get addressed now in elementary school. By the time he gets to high school, he'll be in a pipeline. I mean, and it's happened mm-hmm. throughout his family. It's been a sexual inappropriate situation. That's where you learned it from. Right. It's yeah, normal. Everybody knows. And so that's what I have to deal with. My daughter boxes, so she doesn't have issues. She's pretty uh, <laughs> assertive herself. So I don't have to like me. Um, Whoever's kid that is, can you mute your, mute your mic? Somebody's kid is like... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have. Um, I don't have issues in that way, but I have to deal with it with the other young girls that um, you know I'm with, and so it's a lot of seeing how they're gonna handle it, stepping in when I need to step in. Girls are getting taken out of the class, moving, you know, to different locations. So I feel like there's such a difference. Um, and development between girls and boys at this age. And so because African-American boys are allowed to be so much more advanced sexually, that that's a problem. We have to look at that. What our girls are being exposed to just simply from one of different events with the boys their age. So that's an issue. Also with, with the girls around me, because they do write some passage, you know, they, they're more in a circle type situation. So they do things like we do, you know, what we're doing right now, which is talking and finding different ways to deal with solutions, just being, you know, a female and just having to live in this society. So I feel like we need to put them in circles more uh, so that they can support each other more and really work on their self-confidence because when they tend to be able to advocate for themselves, then they can stand up a little more and stand right. up for each other more. And they just have the confidence when we, we moved here, we weren't, we're from the South. So when we moved here about two years ago, her teacher um, sent a note that I recently saw again. And it, it said, you know, I love the fact that you keep reading all these goddess books, but you know, you can pick up something else. And I, that just really hit me. Like she's really trying to learn about her feminine power now. And I just want that to keep going forward and she keep being able to speak up for herself and her. And I love that she's, you know, she's. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. She (laughs) he don't play with her, you know, and he loves me. And so my conversation has been he needs somebody that he can be familiar with. You can't just keep these boys in an environment where nobody looks like them. They don't nobody knows how to discipline them. They're afraid of being called a racist like. They need to be around, I feel, more males, more black males. They need to be around people that know how to discipline them. And then right. that can really help with some of this behavioral stuff. And people aren't just afraid of them and just kind of pass them through. That's been the problem. They just keep passing him through. And I've asked the school to work on a sexual harassment program so that they can give the girls the skills and the boys the skills so they know what the consequences are. But nobody's really listening they haven't gotten him an african-american resource teacher in there so now pretty much they're going to get sued because it's gone past the school board well i have a suggestion that will at least give you a starting point thank you every single corporation in this world the big corporations all have a air-clad tight sexual harassment policy what i would suggest is that you approach one of them Ask if you can have it to use it as a base and then modify it for, you know, for, for minors because you'll have to add responsibility for the parents in connection with it. Yes. A school that I know who does have a, such a policy is Amador Valley High School in Pleasanton. The reason I know that is because that's where my daughter went to school and we, they sent home, I'm, I swear, it was a, a, a thing three inches thick that parent, you had to sign it and you had to sign that you had read it and that you understood the policies. They don't play. And if your son or daughter did violate anything, they had to set, set aside, like, you know, if you do these things, you'll be suspended. If you do these things, you'll be expelled. And, and then that was it. And it was in written, written form. Every parent had to sign it. And so there was no question when your kid came home saying, I'm kicked out of school or I'm home for a week. You, you, you couldn't, you had no argument because you had signed that policy. That's yeah. what they need at that school. So you can, all, you know, contact Amador. The administration in Amador got to do it quick before you know they let out for the for the summer, yes. but I'm sure they will be happy to share their policy with you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, all right. So let's see. Let's thank you, Keisha, and you know, feel free to um, 
to uh, raise your hand again if you want to. Let's see. I saw some hands up early. Oh, here we go. Um, Laura, can you unmute, you unmute yourself, Laura Allen? And let's get you on here. Hey, this is Lauren. Hi, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? I'm so glad to finally meet you and speak to you. I've been watching for a while. My sister actually introduced me to your video, so I appreciate oh. you. And I appreciate your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things you actually introduced me to that I knew nothing about, I'll say I'm a 39-year-old um, young woman here in Atlanta, Georgia. I was born and raised in Marietta, Georgia. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, you introduced me to the um, topic and the reality of <laughs> narcissism. And I think ever since then, I was able to realize that the previous relationship that I had been in had been one of a true narcissist. Now, I didn't realize it until doing intensive research. After you, you did one video about mm -hmm. it, and I went just deep and just began speaking to and listening to many, many, many people and going over and realizing that I had been through that experience. Now, that was when I was, I think, 38 years old. I didn't realize it until the relationship was over. Um, so what I have to say about that and what it showed me and talked to me, because I'm a woman, I don't have any children. Um, I am in a positive, healthy, beautiful, amazing relationship now. And that's after realizing what I was attracting and what I was choosing before and realizing how being naive and super innocent and an empath, um, I realized that a lot of young girls, I'm the oldest of all my cousins, and a lot of young women um, look up to me and respect me and admire me and come to me for advice. And I realized that a lot of people have personality disorders and also mental illness in our community. And I realized that it starts at a very young age. So I think that at dating age, what I like to offer is that young women be taught. I started a movement called No Contact after I realized what narcissism was mm -hmm. um, to go not no contact with them after learning the terminologies and realizing what it really took to thrive and to um, rise above such a <laughs> terrible experience. So in short, I would just like to say I think that young ladies at the teenage age, preteen age, should be taught that these types of people exist. And so they will have some sort of idea of what it is when they're faced with it very early on. Because I had heard of it in passing, but I didn't know what it was. Gotcha. To the degree that I know now. So you introduced me to that. And I think that's super important is, is out here regularly. And a lot of women are running into it and having um, abusive relationships, whether mental, you know, or emotional and physical, but it's, it's harder to see when it's just when it's total mental and emotional. And a lot of times right. it's not even called abuse. So, Well, Kathy, um, what do you think about what she just said? You know, like tipping girls to the fact that they could be dealing with a person that has mental illness. Yeah, that's true. You mean like family members, like their mother? Well, shoot, no. I mean, you know, it, it could be, well, we're talking about, you know, from relationship aspect, but um, it could be really anybody that's going to have some kind of impact and influence over your daughter, you know, over the girls. Right. You got to be real careful about who you allow around your daughters also, because these people are not good, you know. And, you know, I have a cousin that got mental health issues, and I had her around my daughter, and she was cool, because she tried to talk to my daughter. This is the youngest one. They get along very good and she told us some of the mistakes she made as a young woman and told her don't repeat those mistakes oh well, it, it, was just, a, it really it depends i have uh something to share with you guys um this woman wrote me um an advice letter and as you see i'm talking about it because i was so disturbed i mean i couldn't even sleep that night because i was so concerned about this little girl 
Okay, this lady writes me and she says that um, she feel, fears that her stepfather is grooming her daughter. Her daughter is four. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, she, you know, she says like she tried to, you know, tell her mother about it and the mother didn't want to hear it and this and that. So she decided to keep them, aw- you know, keep them away. Exactly. From that's, that's exactly what she has to do. Well, that's what she said. But let me tell you the rest of the story. So then, yeah, I guess they live somewhere else. So they decided they call her up and say that they're coming to see her. So they got a hotel and everything, and she goes over to see them. And then the mother, for some reason, she leaves the little girl in the hotel room with the stepfather. Her and the mother get in the car. And she says she gets in the car, realizes that she left her wallet. So she's downstairs, you know, gone from the room maybe five minutes. So she comes back into the whole hotel room to get her wallet and sees the stepfather stripped down to his underwear. And the little girl's there. Okay, now what killed me was she sees all this. I would have beat that nigga ass. Okay, I'm saying the police would have had to come. She turns around and walks out the door and leaves the baby in the room with the man. Oh, hell no. I'm telling you, I was so disturbed. And so when you see things like this, you know, I'm looking at this. It's like, okay, this woman must be, like, seriously damaged. I can't even comprehend the kind of thing that would go on in somebody's mind to make them know. I mean, she wrote, she recognized the situation enough to write me about it. But there's some kind of disconnect happening to where when yeah, it's right yeah. in front of her face, she doesn't have the courage or the strength or the, I don't know what it would take for her to like act, to act. I don't, she didn't I actually, act. I don't know either because I, my daughter wouldn't have been there, period. She would have been I'm with saying. me. Exactly. I'm not leaving. If I'm thinking this man trying to grow my daughter, why would I leave in the car with my mama and leave my daughter here? See, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I I just so much about this. I don't. I don't get. But I see this pattern a lot. You know, we talk about this kind of stuff. (laughs) We see this pattern a lot where where the mothers, it's like they're like feed and submit, and they don't really take that next step to actually protect their girls this is a, something of right. grave concern and i we need to figure out too, okay what's missing somebody please explain this to me why do you i really can't explain happened, but you i don't really do don't, I don't understand that i don't understand it that makes no sense to me there's no way in hell i would let either one of my daughters around a motherfucker that i thought was trying to molest them <laughs> Nah, I, I, I don't know. Deb, Deb, explain that to me too, because you know what I was on. I said to you I was on a show last night, and these girls, all these girls, have had situations, right? And I remember my mum. My mum's only twenty years older than me, so you know it's really difficult because she's a young woman. And I remember she adopted her brother from another. A Caribbean country to come to England because it's better for him and to this day I still can't work out how the hell was I in the bedroom with the, a 24 year old man yet my brother is in the bedroom on his own what the fuck is going on with these why, why, you, why, why, why she didn't put him in the why the hell? Hell? he was always trying to get up in my fucking vagina seriously to God I've never told her about it. I'm waiting till that man dies and I'm going to tell him about herself. But they just don't listen. I Why are you waiting until her. he dies? I'm waiting until he dies. Well, she doesn't even talk to him. I could tell her, but she just Please tell doesn't her. listen. Because she needs to know about herself. Yes, she do. I mean, like, seriously. I mean, why, like, would you put a, why would you put a grown I'll man tell her. in a bedroom with a little girl? <laughs> okay, girlfriend, can you phone my mom? <laughs> can you phone my mom? Because <laughs> I'll I was, tell her. What I, is wrong you know what? That? I didn't know. Do you know what? It's really funny because it was a call that I was on last night. And I'm, I'm hitting my 50th this week. And you know that like, you start to do all these major loads of reflections. And mm-hmm. you know that like, every time you get, you hit your milestones. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, this stuff has been so buried, I did not know how buried I had buried it. And that's why I'm really passionate, even though I don't have children. And maybe that's the reason why I don't. But my dad was in the house. How the hell are you running stuff so strong, mum, that your husband doesn't say, no, why would you put your daughter and a 24-year-old dude in the same room with bunk beds? Every time I tried to get on the top bunk, he was trying to put his finger up me. 
What the hell? <sighs> See, I, just, I'm, I'm just, I don't get it. I don't I get it. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I, why was my brother able to sleep like a baby in his own room? All right? So my brother, funny enough, even at this age now, my brother is still the princess. I actually call him princess. My brother is the revered one in the family. Right? Somebody needs to phone mom. I, I don't know. I'm waiting for him to die. I haven't seen him for years. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't seen it for years. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do, but I don't want to do. He never had sex with me, but she would leave me with him a lot. And for yeah, my see, thinking that's now, that. and for my oh, Raina's thinking, here now. Raina is here. Okay. Yes. Hello. Yes. What's your, you know, add your two cents to this conversation. Sorry. Sorry. I went out there a bit emotional. Sorry. I had to no, get no. out. I, 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 I'm glad that you did because what you said perfectly illustrates the point I was making. It's like these women have a blind spot. It's That's just driving me crazy. It's like, it's patriarchy. What? Oh, it's patriarchy. Yeah. It sound, from what it sounds like, like the son was in a room by himself sleeping alone. He was peaceful. But the girl, she's just like placed in a in a dangerous, idiotic situation because the girls are sacrificed so that the boys can thrive. It's patriarchy. Yeah. Okay, so we need to do something about that as well. What do you guys suggest? But I actually think that actually the way that I'm trying to handle it, even at 50, well, 49 and three quarters, you know what I'm saying? I think I should have probably told her, but what I've understood about my mo my own mother is she cannot take stuff. You know when you know your mum. Some mums can take stuff. You can you can tell them as it is. My mum likes to be in this little fairyland of stuff, but she can't take it. Even though she's in La La Land, she, yeah, she's in La La Land. Even though she yeah. does not talk to her own brother and her own sister. She will protect him if I go and say, this is what happened to me. And she would never believe, she would never believe me. She would never believe me. No. Mm -hmm. And when you start to realize that as a young girl, and yet she still wants you to hit the milestones. And this is what we were talking about on the conversation I was on yesterday. Oh, how come she's got no man? How come she's got no children? How come she's not been married? Because all that dysfunction means I don't want to go anywhere near you or them or everything okay and well let's i mean that's it. good but we need to stick to the subject which is girls for right now but so the girls, but the girls don't know this is the, the reason why i'm bringing it up is the girls are such in a funk because they need to make sure that uh, i stay true to my mama that they just don't tell them how they're feeling Deb. that's why i'm saying what i said okay okay well let's get um Okay, Raina was starting to say something about the patriarchy. And let's yeah. get um, Dawn's mic is open. Um, Ade's mic is open. And LR, your mic is open. Resilient Ooh. Soul, your mic is open. Uh, actually, it was me, LR, who was talking okay. about patriarchy. Oh, that was you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, next time, introduce yourself. Okay, now I know your voice and I can connect it with you. Okay. Thank you. So everybody um, whose mic is now open, please share your thoughts. Hi, this is Keisha. I just wanted to say really quick um, to the lady that was just speaking. I feel a lot of times women know we have such a strong intuition. Women know they're comfortable with I've seen that within my own family. You know, they, you could present the truth and they still are going to deny it. But they know, they know, unless, like you said, there's such a disconnect. But most, they know. They just are more comfortable with living in that fake reality because then they don't actually have to do work to heal. It's unfortunate, but we don't know the mother wounds that past generations have had to deal with to where they just completely shut it. And they, they just no protection whatsoever. So it's very unfortunate. 
And I hate that that situation happened to you and it happens to so many women. But I do feel that a lot of them know what's going on. They're just, they're lost in it and they can't, they just can't even move forward and do anything and help them feel what they went through. Hold on a second, Keisha. Hold on a second. Whoever has their mic open and their kid is like all in the phone. This recording is just on my YouTube channel. Can you please get the kid out the room or mute your mic? This is very rude. It's like totally destroying my recording here. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the children were very happy in that background. <laughs> Girl, just make them up too, it's too much. Um, Deborah? Yes. Didn't you say that most mothers don't know when their child is being abused? A lot of they them really don't, don't know. But in a situation like this where it's so long ongoing, okay, like, like this. Say if somebody comes and, you know, you have a family event and somebody molests your child at that family event and it's that one time that person you know that's that one time chances are very high that that mother won't know that that happened in a situation where it is ongoing like this where the person lives in the household there is no way in this world that you cannot see that there's a change in your child you know what I mean, mm -hmm. taking place over a period of time. The child might not reflect the change from one time, especially if the child is young. They won't know, you know, they, they probably won't even know that what happened to them was something that shouldn't have happened. Because if they haven't been taught about, you know, the certain types of touches and stuff, they're not going to know. But if they do, the parent will, they'll start feeling it. It'll be expressed, the confusion and the hurt. And, you know, what should I do about it is going to be showing on their face. And in a situation like this, like she described, where she was in the same room with the guy over a period of years, it sounds like, the, the mother had to have a clue. They had to, I'm sure her daughter showed some kind of, of uh, you know, of changes so there is a difference you know an occasional thing the kid might not an ongoing thing under the same roof you have to have seen something you might not identify it as that especially from what i keep seeing these women have such a blind spot when it comes to this kind of stuff it's like it, they say it's right in their face like the lady who walked out of the room the man's in his drawers i mean what Whoa, more do you mean you gonna leave your baby in there with that around, nasty bath. she walked right back out of the room so see something's going on here there's some serious there's some serious things going on and i mean like I mean, it wasn't, I, I don't know, some instinctively, I've always, it, it, it has affected me, but it hasn't because I have had positive relationships and it made me realise about different sort of people. But I actually remember my mum used to always say to me, and my, my, my uncle, because he moved away and what happened to me, and he would, he would be coming over to the house when I was in my 20s and my 30s or whatever, right, to family function. And she was always like, why don't you even talk to him? Why don't you even like him? She just, I don't know what it is. She just is that kind of chick that just does not get it. You have to explain it to her and she still does not get things. And I just found it easier not to say anything. If he dies, I might tell her, or actually now she's 70 something, I might just tell her, I'll tell her. But I have to, I'm going to have to deal with a whole massive fallout, which is going to be her not being my mum. Because that's what she'll do. And maybe that's what I have to do. If, you can, if, if you're going to allow that to have happened to me and you had a husband in the household that should have protected my ass, first of all, I should have had a brother that should have been protecting my ass, exactly, you know, as well, as much as he didn't have sex with me. So it's, 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 I just can't understand violation. how your father let that, that go down I, like that. Yeah. Do you know I what, Deb, to this part. day, only, do you know what, this only came up this weekend when I was talking with this other conversation I had last night, I was sitting there thinking, where was my brother? Where was my dad? Where were they? Why were they not helping? And you know what it is? My mum was trying to run shit. She was always about running shit. I never knew my dad was... I did. I, I, I got a dad. They've been married, going to be married 50 years next year. But he was not that guy that handled business. He just followed behind her. <laughs> That's what he okay, was. Well, let me, I want to, okay, I need to stick, get back to the, the topic yeah. of the little girl. So when we have um, 
little girls that we know are in a situation that is kind of improper or questionable or, you know, you have some, some your spidey senses are tingling, ladies. <laughs> what should we do? A lot of people have get a gun. in their families where they're like, well, you know, get I don't want to get in so-and-so's business. You know, that's not my business. That's not, you know, it might it may be a friend, a friend, you know, somebody at church. It could be a neighbor's kid. I mean, that's why I call the authorities, you know, even though foster care is not the best place for black children. You know, you really don't have a choice because I did that with a young lady. I know they ain't do anything, but I did call. And the nigga's still there. Do you have to keep you know. calling? Yes, you have to keep calling the in the state of Illinois. until someone takes you seriously? Pretty much. Yeah, I know in the state of Illinois, I mean, I got horror stories I can tell you. Our children have died. And, you know, DCFS come out to your house. They look around. If it's clean, they're not going to do anything. <laughs> they could have cleaned stuff for one day that whole month. But if they come in an apartment, the house is clean. They're going to, you know, walk away like the little baby that was found dead in the apartment and told me here. You know, the house had a, bu- a bug, you know, the caseworker came over there, child care workers, told me everything was cool. And then the baby popped up dead. <laughs> you know what, one thing I did recently, was it recently? There was, um, I was at a bus stop um, not far from where I lived and it's quite um, urban. And there was like, I'd say uh, about five or six, young black guys they were like one was on a bike and you know they're all like kind of like you know how they're doing mm-hmm. and there was this young girl i mean uh, i mean hey she had a great figure but a girlfriend put some clothes on anyway so she was dressed all kind of this was in the summer so she was all dressed in like hot plant pants and stuff like that and these guys just literally i was watching this thing and since listening to deb i've been listening to deb for a good couple of years i was watching it and i was like uh-uh Mm-mm. They're targeting her for, to run her through, but she was she's like been taught to be polite. And that is the biggest problem women have been taught to is to be nice, to be sweet, to be polite, and not to affect anybody. Anyway, these guys, I watch these guys just following her, kind of har- harassing her ass, harassing her ass, and I was getting really angry. And I let two of my buses go because I wanted to watch what was going on because I felt like I don't know this girl, young mixed race girl. I'm going to go and get you. I'm going to act like I'm your mama. And these guys come along and they were trying to get her number. And I said, oh, darling, oh, sweetheart, how are you? I went up to I don't know her from Adam. Oh, my God, that girl's face. I was like, oh, thank God, there's someone older that can just protect her. And I said, uh, excuse me, uh, little boys, move away. She's with me. And they walked away and she, she actually started was crying. I'm holding to this 14 year old girl crying. I don't know from Adam. Just thank God I didn't know how to get out of that situation. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what you need to do? Oh. You need to prep yourself in the way you dress. Is how the, uh, people attract you, how people come to you. You need to be very mindful of those things. I don't know if your mum was telling you that, but I think you need to look to see how you're conducting yourself. You get what you go out. But nobody had ever told her that. Well, and you know, it's very unfortunate because um, it's a hot summer day. She should be able to wear shorts. Yeah, she Unfortunately, should. Unfortunately, yeah. our girls are so, that. Are so predatory oh, that God. we have to teach our girls ways to kind of mitigate that as much as possible. It's not going to prevent it. You could be in the school because I've seen girls in the school yeah. uniform get just as harassed. But um, it's just you know, the environment in which they are in, this Blackistani attitude is prevalent. And, you know, what girl, what, how would you think six dudes on one girl is not going to be intimidating and frightening for her? You see what I mean? I mean, it's like she was going to be scared even if they didn't do anything. Just because you know so- what? She didn't know what to do. I literally, I, I'm, I'm an empath, and I literally could feel her. She was literally surrounded. They were like, you know, they were just like the basic basic guys, basic young little boys, and I, she was surrounded. And there, I don't know what it was in me that day. I must have meditated really good in the morning. But I just felt to myself, I don't know whose child this is. I don't have no children, but I'm going to protect her. Ass. But I stepped to her, and she felt the safeness in me that she moved over. And once those men, that once those boys saw my energy, they just stepped back. They just knew. There weren't nothing going to be happening up in here anymore. 
And I don't know how many of you ladies heard the video I did yesterday to promote this event. It's on a YouTube channel. In there, I shared a story that I, I you know, I, I mean, just like this unfolded right in front of my eyes last year, where the two, there were the two young ladies together that were supposed to be catching the bus at their, where, the, where we were at the transit station and going to a mall out near my house. And um, instead, they ended up leaving with these two guys who were doing everything, spitting all kind of game at, at them to get them to go with him versus where they wanted to go. The younger girl did not want to go. He was talking about smoking weed. She did not want to smoke weed. They were talking about going to his house versus going to the mall. She wanted to go to the mall and go shopping. So there were three points where she didn't want anything to do what they were talking about, yet she went anyway. Ooh. Now, what concerns me is what's missing in a young girl's her persona that would let her go in a situation that was obviously dangerous instead of going to where she said she was going to go or going back home or calling her mother to come and get her what we got to do people, 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 people keep teaching women to be nice I keep teaching women to be nice. I have this fight with my mother all the time. Just why are you such a bitch? I have to be a bitch because I don't need to fight the fuckers that are coming up for me. doesn't matter what age I am. I still have to deal with people on the, on the street. So I have to learn how to when it's safe, I go into this other mode. And when it's not safe, I have to be in that mode. But my mum was like, oh, you need to be nice. You need to be sweet. You need to be kind. That's what it is. And that's the problem. The girls think I can't be nasty i can't be mm -hmm. I, i'm bitchy i'm bitchy but i do it in a really sophisticated way that the guys don't want to understand what it's going on but i'm a tall as well so that helps me but i feel for the younger girls that are small and timid and they feel that their parents have told them be nice as a woman you have to be nice you need to be compliant you need to be nice the, needs to that, die yeah oh my god I what do you guys think about that these other ladies I Don't. think that that's some of it. Um, I, I definitely think that that's a great. Sorry, and I'm Tamika, resilient soul. Oh. The other thing is, Deb, if I remember correctly, didn't you say that she was with a friend? Yes, she when because uh, I was already there. I was at the, okay. the thing, and they came. There was a group of of you know high school kids behind me, a big gang of them that had just got out of school. I guess it's like their hangout place or something before they go home. So these girls walked up from a street. From they must live. One of them must live around there. They mm -hmm. walked up this way, and as they passed in front of me, the boys that were in that group came, saw them and came up to talk to them. So they okay. met right in front of me, and she was she was with with another female friend, and they were supposed to be waiting for the bus, but I, that's not what happened. I think it's also important to um, teach girls how to be assertive and to be okay with implementing their boundaries and saying no. And when I was listening to this situation the other day, it reminded me of one that I found myself in. Um, I was traveling internationally, and I had a friend bring a friend. And that girl had no, I'm sorry, she had no type of street smarts or anything like that. She wanted to hop in and out of cars with people. She wanted to have people come and pick her up from the hotel to buy jewelry, you know, at a supposedly a huge discounted price and everything. And I just remember her at, saying like, oh, do you, you want to go? I said, no, but you can con you can write down your parents' information. <laughs> and so if anything happens to you, um, I don't know who to give this report to. And so it's, it, in in that situation now, if she had, I mean, she went with her friend. So if both of them had been taken and something had happened to both of them, then nobody is there to get help. And I know it can be um, very scary the thought of separating from your friend, especially if you came together. But at least you are able to go back and get help, you know. And it, and so just letting that girl know to be like, no, I, I'm going to separate. You can't really save your friend um, if y'all are both. In, I mean, you can if y'all both in the same situation, but it's definitely going to be harder. So just letting her know that it's okay to say no, one, and then two, your friends are going to make decisions that you don't have to go along with. So mm -hmm. I also think that that was a part of it, too, that she wasn't able to walk away from her friend. 
And I'm, and I'm wondering, you know, because my parents, and I was thinking about it, like, did her mother give her specific instructions? Because, you know, a lot of times we think our kids, you know, understand stuff. Mm-hmm. You have to be specific as a parent. So in a situation like that, I'll tell you what my parents, my mother used to do with me. Okay, you're going to go to the movie theater with, I don't know, say Anna. You and Anna are going to go to the movie theater. You're going to go straight to the movie theater. You're not mm-hmm. going to go anywhere in any stores or anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Even. You know, she would give me step by step, and I'm steady doing this. Okay, mommy. Okay, okay. And then she said, if somebody tries to do this to you, you're going to do this. You're going to do mm-hmm. so I had a full map of instruction, which may wow. have seen yeah. Movies, but she would tell me step by step what might happen, what you oh think will God. happen, what somebody else might think is going to happen. Hey, you had, a mother, you you had the best mother ever. <laughs> And she knows, Debbie, so when I it's, left it's out that door, that. I knew if, if a car comes up on the curb and cut to cut me off. Mm-hmm. I, 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 mean, parents, I mean, so much stuff, so much stuff. So oh in a situation like that, um, I used to tell my friends when I would go places with them, okay, we're going to, the, and this is, you know, when I was a little older, my parents, you know, they already given me all these lessons. We're going to here together. You're not going to leave me and go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're going to yeah. get in the car with me, and you're going to come back home. I'm going to drop you off just where I picked you up. Now, what you do after that and who you do it with, that's your business. But you ride with me. Once you get in this car, you're my yeah. responsibility. And yeah. you're going here, and then you're going to go back. If you have a problem with that, don't get in my car. And every one of my friends would just be looking at me like, well, damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah, I always make sure. I had the same rule at 17 because I was driving from 17 and I had my own little mini. Oh, bless my little mini. I had my little mini and we'd go to a club and literally, no, the girls, oh, uh uh-uh, it's time to leave. I'm rallying them all up. Who wants to stay? Stay. No, you're not staying. You think you're going to stay? No, you're getting in my car. Get his number and do what you need to do with after I dropped you at your house. I've always been like that. I've always been like that. Mm Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm see, like, our rule was go together, <laughs> go together, come back together. But and sometimes if both of us go, you know, like, I, I just knew that sometimes you just have to walk away from people because sometimes you might have a friend and they just don't think. To, that, so, you know, at that point, it's important to fill in when you're young, um, you know, because I had a lot of friends who aren't who weren't, quote unquote, like me. You know what I'm saying? I, and, I, and I know you get to a point where it's like birds of a feather flock together. But, um, and even in this case, sometimes it was my sister, you know, she always wanted to go off and do stuff or get in cars with people, you know, and all of that. And it would just be like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And I don't know what it is where something rises up in some of us, you know, to where we're able to just, where we just kind of have that danger gene or that um, sense, or just to be able to say no, but um, it, it's it's totally okay. And Deb, you are right. Like you do have to, you know, tell kids like it, I'm telling you to leave and come back. But if right, right. insert in this blank happens, this is what you do. And you exactly. can't give them every single scenario of what may happen. But if you give them one scenario and something else happened, they may be able to tie it to, you right. know, the other scenario, if that makes any sense. We have to be able to equip children with that. And especially young girls is so important. Yeah, uh, so uh, you're saying now, that I think, we should. I think now yeah, but it's, bigger than, it's bigger than that, though, now. Let me just tell you, this whole pimping game is oh, huge. God, oh, yeah. Is very, it has taken over the, it has taken over the whole crack thing. And mm-hmm. I don't care what you try to uh, uh, equip your daughter with, they will get her. Because let me just tell you, I live in an area where all they do is pimp. The police aren't doing anything. That's why, Deborah, you have the platform. Let's get us all together, New York, California, whatever. We go to the mayor. We go to the mayor because let me tell you all the stuff we're saying, and we're saying, um, don't do this, don't do that. But when three or four guys are surrounding you, what are you supposed to do? I mm-hmm. see them riding. Let me tell you something. I see them riding in the car, checking the seat. Checking, checking, and I can't even sit outside myself. Let me just tell you, I can't sit outside by myself. I used to could sit outside. Well, I still do because I'm grown. I don't play that. But let me just tell you something. When you sit outside by yourself, they think they think that you're a prostitute, and so then they come around. You see what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. I live in a prostitute area. All you gotta do is watch that movie, um, um, little young girls, or I think it's called. Little young, it was a documentary. It's called Little Young Girls. 
when they riding, they riding in my neighborhood. Let me tell you, that's how bad it is. Let we have to go. We have to go to the mayors. We that's or, 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 or to the governors because it's bigger than that. Let me just tell you. And they got and they have this um this 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 other film that you can watch and it teaches them how to pimp girls. Let me just. I'm telling yeah. you, this is huge. This is huge. It's no longer the crack thing. They ask, remember they were selling crack to people. Now they after the girls. Pimping the girls out, and they're 15, 14. I see them all, and you. And sometimes you don't even know the girl is a prostitute. You sometimes you can't tell them, but that's what they do. They got, they got, they and they live in, and they, and they, and they have them in these homes and these houses, and excuse me, in these houses or in these apartments, and they keep the girl. And the girls come out at night. It's bigger than that. I don't care what you tell your daughter. They still gonna get. They still gonna get them. That's why we got to get together. Debbie, you got the right prop. Um, platform. We go to each city. We, 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 we form an organization. We, okay. I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm I was reading it. something that talked about that sex trafficking being the number one industry. You know, human trafficking, that's what being the number one industry um, in the world now. It's not drug. The drug cartels have switched over to human trafficking in uh, organs as well as bodies you know, for sexual purposes and household slavery and things like that. So um, it, it, you're right. I mean, there are always going to be some people that, that, that get got regardless, but we're talking about impacting the people that we can impact. We can't worry about everybody because there's going to be some, Mm -hmm. you know, some parents who don't believe you anyway. I mean, everything that we're saying, they're just going to, that's not true. That doesn't happen. You're just yeah. You're making that up. You're just bitter. You're just a bitter, evil, <laughs> evil. You're bitter. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, I got that You know, one. that's what they do. When you get, when you start talking about the stuff that black men do to these young girls and trying to come up with some solutions to it and to, to uh, prevent it from happening. Oh, you just hate all men. I can't tell oh, you. Oh my God. God. That's, why, that's why we have to get together. So when, when black people got together before, we got together to save the black man. And he was still yeah. pimping mm-hmm. and, and, and shooting us like I don't know what. This is why we got to get together. We got to get together and go to the police and tell them, take, tell, the poli- tell the mayors and stuff, take your foot off the cop's neck and let him do his job because they know what's Thank going you. on they got the lookouts they got the lookouts let me just tell you in my neighborhood they got they the lookouts they know where the cops are coming when the cops are going they know where the girl they got the guys and they walk around they walk they walk around and they tell you where the, where the prostitutes are make sure they're doing their job they can't get out of it let me just tell you something they can't get out of it and these cops know about this and I'm pretty sure that these cops are saying to these girls, okay, if I help you, then you got to do a favor for me. You get what I'm saying? Oh, we had a big case like that in Oakland um, a year or so ago. This girl, she was 16, and um, she was being sex trafficked. And a lot of the police in the Oakland Police Department were her clients. Wow. Oh. Yes. You can probably read about it online. It was the biggest mess. You, Oh, my God. It just I heard about it. It's here, too. It's here. It's here, it's here, too, in New York City. Let me just tell you something. It's here, too, in New York City. That's why we got to get together, get the mayors or whatever, or the FBI. Get someone. This is what we need to it's because you're not going to stop it unless you go to them. And they, and they do a force. They, they, you know, they, they really do an investigation and really get these people because it's going to keep going and it's going to get worse and worse. That's why this is, your platform will be great for this. I, I vote for the FBI because the police are too hooked up um, with those criminal elements. They had them in their pocket a lot of the time, so I wouldn't even waste my time with them. I think um, from, but let's starting at, at the base, though, yeah. with, with the girls in each of our circles, what can we do? What can we do? We've got to start with, with something that's manageable. We'll build up to that. That's, that's definitely pressure. On, the, on the path. But what can I, we do here today and do to change some young girls' lives? What can we do? 